It is hot in Virginia, guys. Like, I'm from Florida, but it is hot. <laughs> Jeez. Hey guys, it's Sarah and today is Booklist Thursday. This is a video series I do with my friend Lindsay from Lindsay's Little Library and every week we bring you some sort of list or book topic that we feel like talking about and this week we are doing our five-star prediction follow-up that we did with Krista from Books and Jams and Amanda from The Curly Reader. Now since Lindsay, Amanda, Krista, and I do a Christmas book exchange every year, we decided that for this round of five-star predictions we were going to pick books from those gift exchanges. So we had a lot to choose from definitely and we each picked three books that we thought we were going to get five stars. We picked one from each person and today we're going to tell you what we thought of those books. So very happy to have another Taylor Jenkins read book. This is not the book. Oh my god. This is not the book I read for this round. I read this for the last round. Wow. Oh my God, Sarah. Wow. Let me go get the real one. Wow, you guys. Here we go. <laughs> oh, I don't even know what I gave it. Oh my gosh, this is ridiculous. I literally... <laughs> Just explain that whole book and what I thought of it. And it wasn't even for this round, it was for the last round. I can't, you guys. <sighs> My brain is just like, and we're done. We don't need to think correctly anymore, Sarah, it's fine. Okay, my actual first one <laughs> is one that Lindsay sent me. <laughs> and that is Maybe in Another Life by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I cannot even deal with myself right now. Okay, so um, Lindsay sent me this one. And Taylor Jenkins Reid is definitely a favorite author of mine. I have absolutely loved every single one of her books that I've read. And I am working on her backlist right now. I still have a couple more to go, but I was very happy that Lindsay sent me this one to read because I do love her. So this one is very much a sliding doors situation where we follow a woman and we meet her at a certain point in her life. And then she is in a situation where she can make a decision. She can leave a bar that she went to with a friend of hers. She could leave her bar, leave the bar with her friend and go home. And her life is going to go in a certain direction. Or she could leave with her ex-boyfriend who gives her that option. And her life could go in a different direction. And you see how her life would be different in both ways. They parallel each other. And so you see what her life would be like if she went this way and what it would be like if it went this way. And I really, really, really loved this book. Um, my only thing, and I did knock a star off, so this was a four star for me. I don't know what I really wanted from the ending, but I felt like when it ended, like both timelines just kind of ended. And I, I guess I was just kind of missing that connection or this way would be better than this way. <laughs> But that's not really what it was. It was just showing how they would be different, which I get. But I, I felt like I didn't really get conclusions, I guess, if you will, even though I kind of got two. But I just, I don't know. I felt like I, felt like I wanted them to come together somehow <laughs> or like for it to turn out that this is actually what happened. Like she, this is the decisions that she made and this is how her life went. And we didn't really get that. So that's the only thing that I kind of was missing. I felt like I, it didn't really tie up for me. So I did knock a star off because I, I finished it just kind of going, all right, cool. But, but what happened? <laughs> like, I don't really know what happened. <laughs> so there's that. But um, I did really, really, really enjoy this. And I loved the characters. And I used a couple of book darts, not a ton, like I, but I used a few. Um, there were some really good lines in here and yeah. So, but I did give it four stars. Okay, the next one is The Lost Man by Jane Harper. Krista sent me this one. And I have been wanting to read a Jane Harper book <laughs> for a while. And I think I have all of her books. I think I might. And I hadn't read one yet. So 
but now I have, so I'm very happy about that. And this one was really good. <laughs> I really, really enjoyed this one. So this one, we are following a family in the Australian outback. And there is a death in the family and it's mysterious. Nobody knows how this person died or what happened. And they're trying to piece some things together because it doesn't seem right. It doesn't seem like the decisions that were made that leads to their death would actually happen. Um, they wouldn't be that irresponsible, like that type of thing. And so they're trying to figure out what in the world is going on. All along the way, there are some secrets coming out. We're also tip, dipping a bit back into the past to see past things that have happened. And um, yeah, so this was so atmospheric. I felt like I was in the outback. <laughs> I really did. Um, I could feel the dangers of where they were living because they literally lived in the middle of nowhere. And with the climate there, especially this takes place in December, so it's summertime there and just the intense heat can be very dangerous if you're out in it too long. And if you get lost, you could die because you don't have water and you're stuck miles from anywhere and you know the heat exhaustion will get you. And so that to me felt so prevalent when I was reading it. I was like, I was scared for these people <laughs> when things were happening and you could really just feel the dangers of it. So I loved that. It's also very drama filled because it's very small townish where everybody knows everybody, that type of thing. Everybody knows everybody's business. So there's definitely some drama happening. And my, my criticism of it when I was initially reading it was this isn't like a thriller. It's a mystery for sure, but it's very slow burn. There are some parts where it kind of ramps up a little bit and I was kind of trying to decide if that was something I didn't like about it or what, because when, as I was reading it, I was just like, okay, like, but I could put it down for a couple days and be fine. I wasn't like itching to pick it back up all the time. But the more I thought about it, the more that made sense to me because they literally live in the middle of nowhere. So how thrilling is it gonna be? You know, like people aren't chasing them down the street. <laughs> You know, like people aren't breaking into their house. Like that's just not something that's a reality. And so for the story and where it's set and the reality of these people's lives, it made sense that it was a slow burn and that things were slowly unfolding and they were slowly finding things out. That makes sense. So the more I thought about it, the more I was like, okay, that's not really a criticism because sure, I could want it to be more thrilling, but it wouldn't make sense for the story. It would feel out of place. So I think that Jane Harper did that really, really well. And it showed, like it made it more realistic for reading the story that I was reading. So I will say that. And um, so it's definitely a slow burn, but it was very interesting the entire time. I liked how the mystery was starting to unfold and you kind of were finding things out and you get some like past timeline stuff that kind of ties into the future and like all that kind of stuff. So I did really enjoy this. I gave it five stars. So like I thought about making it a four because of the non-thrillery aspect, but I didn't think that that would be fair, honestly. And, and like, just because it makes sense. So, um, so I did end up giving this one five stars and I will definitely read more from Jane Harper. Her writing is fantastic. And there are some content warnings in here. So there is um, discussions about rape and abuse, both child and domestic. So those are in here as well. So something to keep in mind if you're going into this one. Uh, but yeah, so five stars and definitely going to read more from this author. Okay. And the last one is American Predator. This is by Maureen Callahan and Amanda sent me this one. This is a nonfiction true crime book that follows a man who was a serial killer and recent, <laughs> like recently. Um, and how he is considered one of the most meticulous and terrifying serial killers of our time. Okay, so the, the fact that this man, his name is Israel Keys, the fact that this man was able to get away with what he was doing for so long amid the era of social media is insane to me. <laughs> And like the 24 hour news cycles that people weren't picking up on this is insane to me. Just the way that he was able to outsmart some things like that and make it so that it wasn't obvious, number one, that there was even serial killing happening 
And number two, that he was able to go undetected was terrifying, to be honest with you, because nowadays we rely so much on social media and the news to tell us what's going on so we can be aware and we can be diligent. And he found a way around that. So definitely interesting with that. So the first half of this book, I would say, is the way that he was caught. So it was a crime that he committed and the police, you know, seeing the crime or, you know, investigating the crime and following him and figuring out where he is and they were able to track him down and they were able to arrest him. So that's like the first half of this book. And then the second half is him in custody kind of telling his story and talking about other people that he have he has killed and other crimes that he's committed. You know, he's kind of talking in order to get special favors and all that kind of stuff. So, um, okay, I listened to this on audio and the audio was fine. I would say the narrator was a little bit robotic. It was narrated by Amy Landon and it was fine, honestly. Um, I had heard that the audiobook was supposed to have his voice in it, like his like recordings of his actual voice when he was talking and stuff and they were recording it. But my copy did not have that in there. <laughs> I got mine from the library. So I don't know if there's like a different audiobook available that has maybe extra stuff in it, but mine didn't have that in it. So like when it was his speaking parts, it was the narrator, like it was her voice. So I don't know. I'm not sure about that. That would have been really cool, but that's not something that I was able to experience. So, um, okay. This was both incredibly informative, incredibly terrifying, and also so frustrating <laughs> because Okay, a few things. So first, it creeped me out because he was, when did he even get caught? I think it was 2012. Um, or actually, it might have been a little bit before that. I think he died in 2012. Um, so like, this is after 2010 that he was even captured. <sighs> And when I was kind of reading through the stories and kind of seeing where he was and where he was traveling and where he was living at certain times, because he was kind of all over the place, um, he lived and worked in Napa Valley at the same time that I lived in California and worked in Napa Valley. I didn't live in Napa Valley, but I worked there. And that was creepy. <laughs> like, I literally had to pause it and go, oh, I was there at the same time. Oh my gosh. So that was creepy. And then he also stopped at an ATM that was part of them trying to find him when he was arrested. Part of his traveling, he stopped at an ATM in Arizona, right where I lived at the time that I lived there. <gasps> no. I mean, he didn't like live there. He stopped at ATM and that's how they were able to ping where he was. But like creepy. I was there at the same time. <laughs> so that was really like... Even though this man is long dead, I still was like, <laughs> like, I just, it freaked me out. Just knowing that like we shared the same airspace a little bit. So that was a little bit crazy. Um, but it was really interesting to see number one, how he was caught and then how he reacted when he was arrested and they wanted him to start talking and he started making deals and he wanted all these things. And he was giving information. The frustration that I found was that he really wasn't giving a lot. I still, he would give a little bit and then he would stop. And then he'd be like, but I don't want to talk about that. Okay. So we get like a third of a crime that you committed and that's it. And not enough to be able to convict him. So there's probably a lot more victims that we don't know about because he would never talk about them to the full extent to the point where you could like figure out where these people are. A couple he did, but not everybody. And so I felt a little bit frustrated with that. I'm like, if you're going to talk, why don't you just talk? You know what I mean? Like if you're going to, if you're going to share, share, don't just share a little bit. Like what's the point? And it was definitely frustrated because he ended up taking his own life. That's how he died. And if you were going to, do that, why would, like, just say everything you want to say, lay it all out, and then take your life. Like, I just, I didn't really see the point in just giving a little bit, you know, I just, I don't know. 
But I mean, that was his decision, whatever. But me as a reader, I felt like I wanted to know all the details. I wanted to know all the crimes. I wanted, like, I wanted that solidity. So I wanted that solidified. That's what I'm trying to, that's what I'm trying to say. I wanted like all of that to be kind of wrapped up, I guess. And it's not, there's a lot of people I'm sure that he killed that we don't know about. So those families don't have closure either. But the way that he's so meticulous is that he would travel to kill his victims and then he would go back to his home in Alaska where he lived. So this unassuming construction worker living in Alaska is never going to be considered as a suspect for a crime that was committed in Texas. They have nothing to do with each other, right? And police were never able to pinpoint him at all because there's no patterns there. You know, he didn't have a whole lot of patterns. There, the victims were all over the place. He didn't have a type. <laughs> uh, he killed anybody and everybody. And he would bury these kill kits randomly throughout the country. Like he would travel, bury a kill kit, go back home, and then travel back and dig up his kill kit and choose a victim. And then he would kill that person drive them across state lines to bury their bodies or to dump their bodies somewhere. And then he would go back to Alaska. So it's hard to track somebody down like that, right? Just all the movement and stuff. It's hard to, it's hard for police to be able to do that. So that's why he was considered so meticulous and so scary um, and very smart. So yeah. Okay. That's it. I did give this four stars uh, because of the frustration that I felt that he gave a little bit, but not a lot. And I wanted more. I wanted to know more about his crimes and why he did it. And I, I still feel like I don't really know why, to be honest. So yeah, but definitely something I could see myself revisiting at some point And maybe like, instead of the audio reading it with my eyeballs at some point, maybe I could do that. So I'm going to hang on to this one for sure. But um, yeah, very interesting and a serial killer that I had never heard of. And he's recent, which is also very scary. Okay, guys, those are all of the books that I read for Five Star Predictions for this round. And it was pretty good. So uh, one five star, two four stars, but still all really enjoyable. Even the four stars, I still really enjoyed them. And um, yeah, so please make sure you go check out Lindsay and Krista and Amanda today and see what books they read and what they thought. I'm really excited to see um, those results as well. And I will have them all linked down below. And we will see you guys again soon. Hope you have a great day. Bye.